Hey, welcome to Cyberpunk, where the world is serious, but our players are not. Mm. <laughs> well, so, I mean, Eric Preston fucking jacks off whenever there's rampant violence around him. Man, you know what? That's the only way I can get to where I need to be. So you know what? That's how he gets to Cloud Nine. That's true. Anything that's... less than that, it's Cloud like seven or six. That's it's like Cloud Four, man. Yeah, I'm not even I'm not even pushing a halfy at that point. <laughs> If I can only get aroused when there's electronics involved. Exactly. Yeah. Or naked women. Or lamp or posts. Or good weather. <laughs> humidity. Uh, so, <laughs> some things that changed since last time. Silverware. Um, as you remember, BTE was shot in the arm pretty ruthlessly. Yeah. She's since had, uh, you know, healing surgery done to her, and also had her, her neck, cyber enhancement for her vocal cords fixed. So she no longer has erratic voice speech patterns. This Thank is God. thanks to the CRS organization actually having a working medical facility. Tried going other to the things... free clinic with her a couple of times. Did not did not pan out. No, it did not <laughs> pan out. The other things that uh, have changed, uh, unless you want to keep it a secret, we should say who, Eric. No, no, say it absolutely. Let the people know. How, how about you tell them what you have now? All right, so I now have a body modification called... <laughs> I'm sorry. It kills me every time. It is called the Mr. Stud trademark. <laughs> Literally has a trademark in there. Essentially what it is, is it, it's... I have a dick... I have a dick gun. My dick now acts as a gun if I need to in special situations. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have a cartridge which goes into my taint where I can preload like five different... Or was it six darts? It's 15. Fif what is it? 15 darts? 15. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's even more now. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, oh, no. Shit, I actually it just think keeps it growing. <laughs> I think it well, you have a sheet there. I added it to, like, your weapon. Like, the, you have a weapon. It's called the dick missile. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It has 15 shots. I've changed <laughs> the range as well to make it a little more easier to use. It's 40 meters. Nice. Um, and, so it's like a pistol now. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> The the dick gun can be loaded with uh, darts. The darts really don't do anything by themselves. It's like one. <laughs> it's like it's like one d three damage. You know, it's fucking nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what it looks like, basically. Um, Perfect. And uh, he can shoot <laughs> poison out of his dick. However, he can it's only like, do it once. Yeah. So it's like it's like think of like a single shot, like the old west, like little like hip pistols that people would keep on them, the one shot. It's like well, that, pistol. but I can, I can, like a, like, you know, the Judge Dredd gun that he has where he goes like hot shot yeah. and it switches to the round. I do the same thing, but with my dick pistol. So that's how I call <laughs> a different cartridge. I have it's, to like, I have to work it in to, to, to like my sentence somehow. So the person doesn't know what's going on. He literally needs someone to repair his dick gun every time he fires it though. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> like, so like Ike Man or BTE could repair my dick every time. I'm yeah, afraid you're of gonna my dick. Have to to that with a ten foot screwdriver. This is the guy who puts titties on everything. You can repair my dick. <laughs> repair my <laughs> dick, Bike Man. The difference between titties and dick. <laughs> repair it. Be That's not his man. fetish. That's not his fetish. But no. So other like, than that, other than that, what other enhancements did you get? So my dick still works for everybody. It's like, what happens when you have sex? Does it still work? Yes, the dick is still a normal dick. It's just I can also like. It's like, you know how when you jizz or when you pee, like, same thing comes out of the same hole? It's like that, except that now I have a third thing, a third thing which is a dart. Yeah, um, however, the ins the person who installed it also put a keyword into your phrases. Uh, so, it's never going to come up in conversation, but if you say Shazam, you will fire all seven at once. So, like, just be careful. <laughs> So well, that's gonna get dangerous because that's usually what I say when I climb. That was a joke. Exactly. It was a joke. Right? <laughs> I thought you were serious. I was about to be like, "That's awesome!" <laughs> Shazam! Oh my god! Like... I just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Can we not? Have, do we just not have sex scenes for him? <laughs> I feel you, man. No sex scenes here. Let's see. <laughs> anyway, Let's see. Uh, what else did you get, Eric? Uh, I also got a. Um, I lure, I got a like a martial arts chip. No, you got a melee chip. A melee chip, sorry. You want to explain that a little bit more? So Eric got a uh, processor installed in his brain and a chip receiver slot installed in his wrist. 
So now Eric can install up to nine chips that will allow him to basically augment any skill that he has. See, it should have been in his shoulder so he could say, I have a chip on my shoulder. <laughs> <Bunch of people. laughs> oh, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so the reason they have it in their arm is because it's for ease of use. But because you can't like see what chips you're pulling out of your shoulder, right? But you can see what pulling out of your wrist. And so the chips work as you can take any skill and you can chip them up to three points. So in Eric's case, he chipped his melee up to eight instead of it being a five. So it's a, it's a cheap, effective way of people being able to level up their skills without having to learn. So if you wanted to learn a language, for example, chipping is a great way to do it. Uh, now it's, like, anybody... it's like it's like Neo in the Matrix, where he just wants to like download something into his brain. Yeah, basically, same thing. Same thing. Except you know, if you take the chips out, you, you lose the capability of doing it. I know feng shui. Way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did anyone else get any upgrades for their characters? I uh, I got skin weave, so hey. I uh, I now have skin armor. That adds ten to to my uh, to stopping power. Shit, that's yeah, a lot, man. Yeah. Um, so the way that uh, nano weave uh, skin weave works is basically it's nanobots. Uh, you inject them into your bloodstream. Then after two weeks, uh, they solidify underneath, just under the layer under your skin, and they repair basically the skin on the front and inside of your skin after bullets come in. Unless they puncture. So that's basically what happens there. It kind of looks start like bleeding nanobots. If we get punctured. Uh, uh, no. That kind of no. sounds like, like it would be like Blade of the Immortal if you ever read that. No, I haven't read Where that. He's got like these, he's, he's basically immortal because he has these worms inside of him that <laughs> every time that like there's a, he's like cut or stabbed, they all like sacrifice themselves to like repair the body. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, like they kind of do that a little, little bit. A little, little bit of weed. It's so really thing. shiny. I got to put on my makeup. <laughs> I'm sorry. That still, that still makes me laugh. I'm sorry, I'm a little, oh. little shiny. Hold on, makeup. It's okay. Makeup. Makeup department. All right. So, uh, was there anyone? Did anyone else want to get any sort of upgrades whatsoever? You have, basically we're gonna we're gonna be take uh, stepping off two weeks from the last episode. So, this is a good time to get anything like nano weave or anything like that that you wanted to get. Give me the nano weave. You want to get the nano weave? <laughs> or hit me! Or, hit me with the nano what, weave. What level of nano weave do you want to get? <clears throat> There's levels to the nano weave. Absolutely. <laughs> Welcome to Cyberpunk. Fuck this face. Best bots you can. Uh, so uh, you can have anywhere between um, six uh, stopping power and sixteen stopping power. Damn, dude. Well, what's the what's the detriment to me for like choosing the uh, higher tier? Okay, so the higher tier one, you lose attractiveness. <laughs> And it's easier to spot, and the humanity... He's already ugly as fuck. The, the, I'm not worried, I'm an Adonis. Yeah, the humanity cost is higher, so for a 16, it's a 2d6 plus 4. I could be closer Hit to a me. light post. So you want, you want the, the... Do you have 2,700? Yeah, I should. Alright, cool. Alright, so... 3,840. Uh, roll me, if you will, good sir, a go. uh, bunch of die. Represent okay. your humanity. What what bunch of day? Two D six plus four, I think it's that means nothing to us mm. that aren't our GMs. <laughs> Three D six plus four. While he's rolling, I also got a uh, a face like a mask, an armored mask. So I look like whenever I go into battle I have like a destro mask that's got some good armor on it. Alright, so you take thirteen humanity to get your skin weave. But on top of this you will have uh, add 16 armor to every single slot that you have. Woohoo! Which is <laughs> an awful lot. <laughs> lot. <laughs> I got it! It feels really good under the skin, too. Alright, where's that? Uh, <laughs> what is it exfoliates and moisturizes. Mm, it's great. It's good. Oh, damn. It's good. It's good. It's good. Don't use massage oil on your skin after this, though, because it, But you're already in the armor slots. Are you bad. doing it already? Yeah, you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can do the other ones if you want. I'll add your humanity to your page. Mm. Oh, no, you got this. Adding 16 in math. Yeah, hey, you have to do the you're an all-star. Add 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no metric system, please. 
No metric system. Fuck you. This game's in metric. <laughs> you said it like changes like randomly. It does. Like it does. Some of it's in metric system. Some of it's like. Yeah, it's like, hey man, uh, the the distance in this game is all metric, but the vehicle wet speeds is imperial. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. It makes no sense. So. It makes total sense. We talking about? <laughs> no, it makes literally no sense. <laughs> Yeah, if everybody's saying like, let's get a better gun, I'm going like melee style. Like that's why I'm, I'm learning martial arts and I'm trying to get better reflexes and stuff like that because I just want to like get in there. Yeah, look at your I armor. Saw, I stole an assault rifle from one of the I'm a wow, beast I'm now. That shit. Nice. Yeah, your armor is fucking hella ridiculous. Except now you sort of look like the T-1000 a little bit. <laughs> well, that's cool. Now he can trick unsuspecting lampposts. <laughs> you know? Hey, baby, right. I'm one of you. <laughs> I am metallic. All right, so do you, uh, how about we get started? Hey, baby, let's glow let's do fuck. It. Let's open up that right. story. So I I wrote a little uh, little starting thingy here, so you're going to have to persist with me a little bit. It's not going to be a regular thing, but uh, I figured we can get started with this so that we can sort of set the mood a little better than what I set in the first episode. So, sure. all right. Paint us a picture, Dave. The year is 2017. <laughs> the distant future of 2017. The hey, grim, man. dark future of 2017. This is, actually, this is actually the past for the game. All right. Oh, okay. um, 2017, Night City in the combat zone. The camera zooms into a nondescript skyscraper that looks very much the same as the others around it. It pans slowly across a wall with three nervous looking men and one reading a screen sheet. On the sheet, we have a picture of two men standing side by side, both men identical. The one on the left seems to be a little grayer though. The heading in big bold letters says, first clone as we live and breathe. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Henning, uh, Mr. Taurus is ready to interview you now. Uh, Charles Henning stands up and hands his screen sheet to the man next to him. Maybe it'll calm you down, he says, with a smirk. The camera follows Charles as he uh, sits opposite his soon-to-be boss. 2019. Night City. Still within the combat zone. Charles Henning can be seen sitting in the same spot, only this time he seems to be a lot bigger than he used to be. Wheezing, sweating, obviously having a hard time. <clears throat> Charles, everyone in the office is worried about you. The past few months, we couldn't help but notice how much weight you put on. How little you interact with your employees. I'm worried about you. You're my best executive, after all. From this point onwards, you're effectively on leave. Sort out your health problems and come back to us after a month. The camera fades into a scene with Charles Henning sitting in a doctor's office with his young and obviously more healthy wife sitting next to him. Followed by a scene of Charles without his shirt being inspected by the doctor. The stretch marks on his belly are obvious of rapid growth. Another cut, we see the doctor handing over a business card to Charles that simply has the CRS logo on it, with a phone number on the back. We now see Charles Henning and his wife and a nondescript man in a black suit talking in what is obviously the Henning home, with pictures of Charles and his wife before his problem. You couldn't even call them the same man these days. We see a smiling CRS salesman saying things like, it'll be all right and you're not alone. CRS only wants the best for you and your expecting family. Insurance is recommended. Finally, the camera focuses back on the pen, scribbling out the signature of Charles Henning onto the bottom of the form. We skip forward another year to 2020, Night City. Just outside uh, the combat zone in Chalkhurst on Purgus Street. The truck pulls up to a moderately run down building just outside the combat zone in Night City. Three men can be seen unloading boxes, chairs, and a mattress as Charles Henning holds open the door. He looks considerably more healthy these days. Still a little big, but you can tell he's working it off. His face holds a lot more color than it used to. The sun sets and Charles and his wife holding a young baby boy look over their new home. The, world, the words 
We'll make it work, Charles, echoes over the obviously empty building. The sounds of their neighbors, however, can be heard screaming at each other uh, through the next door. The crashing of plates startles a young kid into a crying fit. The banging on the walls follows the screams, saying, shut up that fucking kid or I'll kill it. Jesus. This will be a constant for the next few months. <laughs> the last thing we can hear is, we'll make it work. All right. Uh, we join our players as they uh, step out of their car, uh, just as they enter Perga Street. And in the, your hands, um, uh, Foshus, whatever your character's name is, Preston. Uh, <laughs> can you add it to your uh, Roll20 character name, please? Because it's super hard for me to remember. Uh, just press a little code there. Just put a little notepad on one of your monitors that has our names on it. <laughs> so easy. It's so simple. So easy. Uh, it's not like I don't already have a thousand things already worked out. It's a little tiny notepad. Yeah. Okay, like there we go. Point font. Thank you. Thank you. That should be better. Uh, My name's Gary Buchanan. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Buchanan. So, um, uh, Preston, in your hands, you have the following pink slip. I will give it to you. No, is this the guy we already repoed? No, this is a different No, guy. no, that was a different dude. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so you're just saying fuck you to the one that I chose, and you're just giving me this one? <laughs> this is just for a little intro thing. It went back to Ah, uh, uh, Okay. All right, boys, listen up. Oh, sorry, BT, I didn't see you there. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to tell. All right, so today we're going to be going after a gentleman by the name of Charles Henning. Uh, he has his residence in the West Hill High Rise, so uh, get yourselves out of those dirty-ass clothes because we're going to be going into a decent part of town. Well, anyway, you've already tracked him down. Uh, you obviously know that he doesn't live in the West, West Hill High Rises anymore. He now lives... Outside, this information would have been good before I started. <laughs> well, did you not listen to the whole introduction? Anyway, he uh, he well, lives then why in Tall Crest now. Why the fuck is it on the pink slip that you just gave me? <laughs> because the pink slip only has the location of the people oh! when they went through the surgery. God damn it! All right, so apparently, sorry, forget everything I just said. I'm still recovering from surgery. Uh, he doesn't live in the West Hill High Rise anymore. He lives in the location that our awesome third-party voice just told us. So, um... Yeah. Where, what'd you say? You're, yeah, that's where he lives now. That's okay, where you, you. At, you're literally at his home right now. So okay, you, so... Uh, God damn it! Sorry if that wasn't... That would have oh, been nice just, if you said that we were there already. Forget so. everything I just said. Forget everything I just said. <laughs> we're starting over. Eric is in a burger coma still. Jesus so. Christ. <laughs> Good seeing you, boys. <laughs> Good seeing you, boys. So today we're going to be taking, uh, we're going to be repossessing and reclaiming the pumps for Mr. Charles Henning. He has a heart pump, a 20VX, which is our new top of the line model. So we definitely got to get that one back. Um, he had CR uh, surgery insurance, but only the bronze tier. So, I mean, he owes us about 74,000 euro bucks. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. He, he has a lot. Uh, he paid off a little bit. And so now he only has about 27,747 euro bucks left on his tab. So it seems something manageable for a man of his stature. He comes from a high paying job. Um, so, I mean, honestly, this, this should be an in and out job. We shouldn't have any issues here. Um, we did see that he did have to sell his home and move to uh, this very just detest. And I pure out my hands as I'm saying this, this disgusting part. Of the city, so let's let's make this in and out. I feel like this the air is just crawling on my skin. Uh, any concerns, uh, Dresden or Sheldon? Take We're gonna have to watch throw. another incredibly painful impromptu surgery again, aren't we? Well, hopefully not. If everybody does their jobs right, hopefully it should be nice in and out with a nice paycheck, and we can leave Mr. Henning to his business. Dresden, uh, I understand you've scoped the place out a little bit. Do you have any uh, any security concerns? Uh, yeah, not at the moment. All right. So, what do you what do you say? Should we just make this in and out, boys, real quick? I also have something very fun to tell you after this job is over. So let's make this a quick one. Why can't you tell us now? 
it's, uh, I like a surprise, you know. Keep you guys Spill on the your beans. Toes. What's the surprise? Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's go. Let's go walk up to the door. New lamp. Excuse me, Mr. Henning, are you here? Uh, so this building is an apartment complex. There's about three levels. Okay, so I buzz. I buzz his his buzzer for the. Oh, there's no guess, need. Like, there's literally like four people sitting out the front. But if you look at the buzzer, you can definitely find out what apartment number he's in. Okay, so I look at the buzzer. What apartment's he in? It appears Mr. Henning uh, resides in apartment 2D. Okay. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, could you tell us if a uh, Mr. Henning is here today? Huh? A Mr. Henning in 2D. You look like a fucking cop. Are you a cop? Is he a cop? Nah, oh, man. He's got that trench coat shit. Cops have to have a logo on their fucking... Trench coat shit. The, oh shit, man! And then, and then a, a young woman sort of like perks up and goes, uh, "You want to make? You want to have a good time? I need I some." I, gra I grab one of the fucking stoners and I slap him across the face. <laughs> Henning. Hey, man! Henning, Whoa. where's Henning? Is he here? Oh, that. F uh, I don't smack know. Smack him man. again with the back of my side. Ah, oh man. <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah, you're talking I don't too know slow. Anything. I shove him down and I grab the other guy and smack him. Uh, <laughs> He's got two guys in his hands. Uh, him. Preston's touching himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, starting, I'm slowly starting to rub my nipples and I go. <laughs> <laughs> now, Preston, uh, as much as I like where this is going, uh, it seems like our female friend over there might be a little bit more coherent than these gentlemen. Mm. I just kind of, I just kind of stare Ugh. at Preston for a second. And I just like slowly let go of the the fucking potheads or whatever the fuck they are. <laughs> hey man, don't be annoyed. I just, I turn my attention to the girl. And yeah. without, and cautiously, I do not slap her as I'm like eyeballing Preston over there, rubbing <laughs> his nipples. Okay. Do you know? It's who like Henning really, is? it's really subtle. It's really subtle. I'm just like. So not, not, not subtle enough, bro. Not subtle enough. <laughs> <laughs> so she's sitting there uh, smoking a crack pipe, um, and uh, she's she's sitting there and she's, she she finishes and she breathes. I was like, <sighs> I don't know. Can you uh, make it worth my while? Her eyes like start to gloss over as she says that to you. I uh, I pull out one euro buck, and I, and I go, "Here's ten. What do you know?" <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, uh, that's definitely gonna need some roll. Or something <laughs> Let's take a look at what you can do. Oh, uh, fucking blitzed out of her gourd. Okay? Yeah, it won't, it won't be a very hard one. Okay, but uh, it will it, need a roll. Sure. Because you might you might fucking fail it spectacularly. Uh, why don't you give me a persuasion fast talk? So roll a 1d10 plus 10, and you need to pass a 12. Boom. God, this thing is super annoying. Okay. She uh, she not only she looks down at your hand, she goes, Wow, 50 credits. <laughs> <laughs> she takes it and she goes, Yeah, man, just 2D, just tell him you, you're here to buy. He'll know what's up. Uh, doesn't matter what you want to buy, it doesn't matter. And she like sits back down, and she just, she fucking like pockets her 50 euro dollars uh, <laughs> greedily. And, um, she uh, runs back. Uh, she just sits back down. Yeah. Thank so you now know where he lives, and uh, you now know how to talk to the man. So, all right, all right gentlemen, shall we? We shall. I, uh, I open the door for Weldon and Dresden, and we all walk in and go up the stairs to apartment 2D, and we're standing in front of the door. I knock three times. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Henning, are you available, sir? Yeah, you, you hear like a, the slot open up. And then it closes. And then, you know, the door sort of opens up with, like, the chain mm -hmm. still attached to the inside. And what appears to be a woman's face appears around a corner, and she goes, 
Go away! And then she shuts the door again. And you can hear it like dead locking from the inside. Okay, I knock I... on the door again. And I go, excuse me, uh, we're looking for a Mr. Henning. We'd just like to talk, madam. I talk over him. I say, we're here to buy. She opens the door again. Um, uh, again, the, the chain's still connected. And she goes, what do you want? I flash a wad of cash. And I said, we're just looking to talk and see what the merchandise is. You don't come in, you buy through the door. Uh, we're looking for a much larger quantity than you might be used to, uh, and we prefer to do our business face to face. Might we come in, please? No. I flash she, my wad of cash again. She shuts the door, locks it, dead locks it. Okay, uh, Dresden, um, it appears that our madam is being a little difficult. Can you get Sheldon you're to talking do something to her like fancy? a fucking white bread piece of shit, okay? <laughs> I knock. I knock on the fucking door again. I sigh and go and fiddle. I I, I kind of we'll move around the corner. I tell. I tell, I tell. Like we'll buy through the door. We're desperate. The door opens again. You hear the deadlock uh, come down, but she uh, she opens the door again. She's like, "What do you want? How much?" Right. I take out my monofilament knife and I cut the fucking chain off. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> hey. It's monofilament. No, yeah, no, you got it. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing you did that. Why I love in the face with the SMG I know, right? <laughs> good job, Nick. Like, we're great. doing the violent just thing. Right? Take it out and shink. And then yep. I just no, open the door. She, uh, yeah, so uh, let's do an opposed melee check here um, to see whether or not you can push the door in on her. It won't be very hard, obviously. But. Um, Oh yeah, I'm gonna get my die out. Oh, <sighs> die. I'll, I'll set the priest in here. So I'm gonna say that... You gotta be 12. Okay, so 1d10 plus... You got plus this. Uh, 7. Yeah, if you can't, if you can't fucking push the door in on a woman... Who's drunk out? It's gonna be fucking. <laughs> I'm gonna make fun of you a lot if you can right. do this. So you basically just sort of put your foot between the door and uh, the the wall, and then you slip a monofilament knife in and cut the uh, chain off. And the woman sort of like yelps backwards as you push the door open. And basically, when you walk in, you can see um, w the house. Uh, previously described, except now it's sort of covered in like paper, and there's a table with like a lot of bags and obviously drug produce on there. Um, and there is a woman uh, who resembles the uh, Charles's wife previously, um, who is now like sitting on her butt on the ground, just saying like, "Okay, just take what you want." Don't hurt me, please. Oh, God, don't hurt me. And tell her, yeah, we, uh, we want what's inside your husband. <laughs> what? What? I'm sorry, excuse my brush friend oh, here. I, uh, <laughs> I, my husband isn't caring anymore. He's, 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 he's not a, he's not a mule. No, there's That's nothing fine. in here. We're, we're with the, uh, with the RADS division of the CRS, madam. Uh, could you tell us where your husband is right now? She sort of like just sort of sits there agape for a moment and she's like, You said CRS? I did. Do you have a, a identification or something? I flash my wallet like it's a badge. You're gonna have to let me look at it. Okay, I actually show her my CRS ID. Okay. Um, she like sort of stands up and leans against the wall a little bit and sort of like, Side. Also, fuck, yeah. I couldn't get a fast talk roll for that one. <laughs> My fast talk is high as shit, goddammit. Do you mean to, like, convince her? Yeah. Which well, she didn't really need much convincing, I'm gonna tell you that right now. But... Okay, fuck you then, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she leans against the wall and she sort of sighs. And she's like... Uh, I, I, yeah... I knew this would happen eventually, I suppose. And she sort of like scuffs her feet along the floor, and she's like, "He's in the in the bedroom." And he looks up okay. at you. 
I, I, I look over at Dresden and Weldon, and I snap my fingers and I point at the door. All right. Uh, uh, so BTE just like shoulders her bag, and <laughs> walks over, and uh, goes into the bedroom. And you can hear the sounds of uh, prepping. Wait, did you ask if, if they have the $24,000 and they said no? Oh, yeah, I just went to make sure I'll they, be out in like, the hall. I went like this. <laughs> I went like this and pointed to, like, make sure he doesn't fucking get away. Like, go grab him. No, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, then watch the door. Make sure no none of those crackheads come in here. I don't know. I'm looking for crack and shit. Dave just smiled evil. No, it was just fucking chat. Something. <laughs> Something's afoot. Uh, yeah, so, um, basically, BT goes into the bedroom. Who's going with you? Her? Uh, I'll go with her. Okay. So, I... you guys head into the bedroom. Uh, the moment you, um, walk into the bedroom, you can basically see Charles. He, uh, he kind of looks malnourished to, the, to a bit. He's got, like, basically holes, like, scars up and down his, his arms, his forearms and stuff, and, um, his eyes are, like, sunken into his head. Uh, BTE sort of, like, starts inspecting him a little bit, and, um, let me just do a roll real quick on BTE. Uh, roll yeah. the surgery. <laughs> not, 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 not so much surgery, but uh... you're just gonna like check him out to see if he's healthy. Yeah. Give him the Zydrate. Zydrate comes okay. in a little glass. Yeah. Mark. So <laughs> she looks him over for a little bit, and she's like, um, "Preston, um, this guy won't live through a surgery." I come rushing into the room, and I go, "What do you mean he won't live through a surgery?" You look at him, and you just. It's pretty fucking obvious that he's in no condition to go under the knife, especially in a non-secure room. And I just go, oh, mm. and I put uh, I put my my little uh, fuck. What do you call that thing? Kerchief. No, it's like a pocket scarf or not a scarf, like a pocket. Yes, yeah, like a kerchief. Yeah. Like a pocket square, whatever. I put that yeah, over pocket. my mouth and I go, ooh. Um, excuse me, madam, could you come in here for a second? She she just stands there and she goes, I know, I know, I know. She walks okay. in. Um, I what, walk. What? I, I turn. I turn to the to the wife and I go. Now, madam, we have no desire to to repo your your husband's parts if he's in a state such as this. God knows what condition our parts are in. Uh, it appears you only owe about twenty seven thousand. We'll call it a. We'll call it. 28,000 credits on uh, on your bill here. Uh, I see that you have quite the uh, the enterprise. Uh, we could just take a check and just get out of your hair. What do you think? <laughs> she sort of this is like lost a little bit. You think you think all of this shit liquidates into fucking cash? You think that's that easy? I mean, you've seen the people that buy the shit from here. They're like Coked out of their fucking minds, but barely able to make fucking ends meet selling this shit. It's laced I with know. all types of terrible shit. It's not even pure. Well, who's your supplier? They must have some money. Look, we've tried. There's a reason why we haven't paid CRS the money that we owe. We tried. We, we paid easily. I mean, the problem is, is this neighborhood got awful and it wasn't we weren't able to keep up the work and Charles ended up using instead of just selling it's <sighs> okay I, I go okay w w one second I've like stop her mid like lamenting I was like okay okay one second I turn I walk out and I go to Weldon and I go well can you get into their computers and tell me their finances please <laughs> oh there's no computer in here <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I have. I, I have build a laptop. one and go on it. I don't know. <laughs> no, I have a laptop. I have a laptop with me. Remember, hmm. in my briefcase, I always have a laptop, just for situations like this. So I okay. hand, I hand Weldon the the laptop. Okay. Uh, Weldon. What would that be? Cybersecurity role? Yes. Uh, no, that wouldn't be security. It would be. Um. So this is uh, going to be a cybertech role. 
Cybertech. I'm mm. uh, sorry. Uh, no, yeah, Cybertech. And. Uh, yeah. Give me one of those. So roll a 1d10 plus 18. 1d10 plus 18. You need a two or higher, basically. <laughs> there you go. God, this fucking pop out no. just keeps going <laughs> so to the top stupid. So stupid. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, you try to access uh, the bank account through their information that they paid uh, CRS through originally. I'm typing and going. That's very good elevator music. <laughs> About halfway through that, um, you realize that their account has been closed for like seven months. <laughs> Looks like their, their account's been closed. They had one massive withdrawal uh, for about uh, 20,000 credits. And that was about a year and a half ago. And then they closed the account quite quickly after that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. They got nothing, Zilch, nada, tumbleweed. I put I put my hands, I put my hands on my side and I sigh deep and I go, Dresden, could you could you come here for a second? What's up? I lean I lean in close, Dresden. I go, you've seen people like this before. You've had dealings with this sort. In your opinion, how much do you think they have? Or how much could they get together? In like a week? I don't know, like a couple hundred bucks? Mm. Yeah, the fact that you were able to trick that junkie outside to think that it's 50 credits is like... That sort of shit would feel. That was that was not hard. That was not hard when I did back out there. I mean, these guys probably do it every fucking day with these people. Mm. Uh, we probably make more money taking his body waiting for him to die and selling him, selling his corpse or some shit. Hmm. How much you think we'd be able to get? Should I do a roll to see if I know? <laughs> you you want to see how much you, you want to sell his body? Like, yeah, to? yeah. Like, sick, fucking disgusting man body. Like, really yeah, like, if, he, if, if when we operated and we took the parts... So I do know there is, a, there is a black market that buys, like, corpses. Yeah, and shit. well, it's not a black market. It's not? No, it's not. We could yeah, always, always lend them the money, and then they could give it right back to us, right? Uh, I am about to... Sheldon, you're not helping right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, I okay. Yep. Go ahead. Give me a... Let's see here. What do you have that we can roll? Uh, it'll probably be Street Beal. Uh, yeah. Didn't we... Yeah, try, let's do wait, it. It still says six. Don't I, don't I have... Didn't we add more to, to my Street Beal? No, my no, we, we can't chip that. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> you uh, can't chip street smarts, Nick. No, no, you can't. You can't chip um, class specific, uh, like the unique ones. So, okay. uh, yeah, give me a one D. Uh, a D. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. A uh, six plus one D ten. One D ten plus six. There we go. I said it right that time. God, I don't know how to fix this. <laughs> it's so annoying. All right, a ten. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, okay, so you, what you know about Body Chop is that they, uh, sorry, Body Banks, is that they do buy, um, uh, bodies when they're dead, and they buy them in parts, so arms are about, uh, 500, uh, legs about 600, heart, liver, kidneys, all that sort of stuff, ears, organs, they, they, you know, eyes and ears are the most expensive, um, but you do know that uh, a body in such poor condition, such as this, will get you pittance. Right. Uh, because what they're after is healthy bodies that they can keep in vats to sell on to people who want to replace their limbs with, with more functioning ones, like if they get it crushed or um, if they lose it, which happens a lot. As you can imagine, so his eye, but but you said the expensive parts like eyes and ears that would be affected by the drugs, would it? Yes, um, it would be affected by the drugs. Yes, because yeah. basically they would have to flush the eye, uh, like the organs specifically. Organs they would have to flush. They would have to like push out all the bad blood that happens through drugs and stuff like uh. that. Um, so it's basically tainted at this point. But it's a it's a it's good to inquire about that sort of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay, so what do you guys think? I don't know. I mean, do you guys really want that two back that badly? So um, at this point, Lucy comes into the uh, the conversation. She's like, uh, "Listen, um, we won't be able to pay anything for what it is." So, no shit. We've already talked about this. We talked about it months ago, and Charles thinks that it's better to start fresh. Yes, I'm. I'm ready to start fresh, so if you need to, you can just take it. You don't need to call anyone or any ambulances or anything. Just take what you need and let me get on with my life. All right, chop them up. I, I snap my fingers over to BT and I go, BT, can you, do, can you run a diagnostic uh, check on him? Just see see how our part well, is. Well, then you're going to fucking watch this time, okay? I'll uh, be at the hall! <laughs> Yeah, she's like, yeah, sure, just, uh, yeah. And she pulls out, like, a little tiny, like, uh, basic cybernetic scanner sort of thing, and she looks at it and she's like, well, say what you want about CRS, but they build good shit. This is probably the only functioning part of his body that's left. Okay, all right. Uh... So, so out, of, out of game here, um, the CRS organs are so well reserved that's why they're so expensive that mm -hmm. they can literally give life to a junkie who should have passed or expired a long time ago this is basically what you're seeing here it's kind of like he's on life support because his heart is still functioning if that makes any sense this is yeah, the only wait, part of his body that's real still real quick i've been i've been thinking about that what did the wife say to us just now yeah so she was fine with you uh, taking it away, as long as she like can they, get a fresh like start. Like he, he basically said, like he knows he's gonna die when they come uh, to take this from me. So okay, yeah. uh, Sheldon, could you be a deer? And I kind of whisper this to Sheldon. Sheldon, could you be a deer and check to see if there's any life insurance policies taken out on our uh, on our friend here, Mister Henning? I don't know if Sheldon can do that. Maybe <laughs> Weldon could. Maybe you okay, should she ask him. Whatever, babe. Just get it done. And I start tinkering with my cell phone. <gasps> <laughs> Whatever, babe. Slaps him on the butt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll look into it. All right, give me, give me a electronic skill for this. Um, actually, no. Let's get... Um, mm, mm, uh, you know what? Basic tech. Let's do basic tech here. Because you need to be able to look into... Um, uh, you know... Websites and stuff like that. Yeah, basic tech. Uh, so 1d10 plus 18. Okay. And I'll say you need to pass a 25 to find out information about this guy. Because uh, normally health oh. insurance. Is, uh... Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so... Um, I mean, there are hints of him having a... Um, a an account through uh, LifeMain, which is the uh, private health that they have. It's super expensive, and it's normally done through corporations, if anything. Can we see what the policy number is? Like how much the dollar amount is? Well, what you'd know about these sorts of things is that they need to be done through a uh, a court, right? Uh huh. And from all intents and purposes, you you would assume that he's not really a part of a corp anymore. So the policy is whatever policy he had on him is null and void. Well, it might be. They might have forgot it. You don't know. I mean, like... It, but if he's, not, if he's not part of a corp anymore, wouldn't that nullify the agreement? It might. Unless, unless, I mean, it depends. Things got mixed it, up in the process. And... Yeah, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. For example, if you had enough ability to be able to convince or change records, it could also help. Okay. Wink, wink, um, nudge. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna ask Weldon if he could do more digging into this guy's past and the corp and everything like that, but thanks okay. for the metagame. I'm pretty interested in that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you what, um, uh, Weldon, you, uh, you, get, you get struck by an epiphany in this process. Um, if you were to succeed, another two more 
25 rolls, like back to back, um, I will say that you are able to... Same dice? Yep, so same dice. Roll Um, twice? Yep, you got to beat 25 twice. So just press up twice. Mm, Nope. 23 twice. Okay, so yeah, if you were able to do that, then you could have easily found his prior health insurance that he had or life insurance through this company. And then you could have reactivated it without anyone knowing. But since you can't, then this is where we're at. Maybe if you had a hacker in the group or something like yes, that. Yes, we, we, we really need a hacker. I, I'd say Preston aside, need... like, what, like, what's the deal, man? Why do you care if she has a life insurance policy? I'm, like, whispering to him. I, I basically Either we tell... come here for the money or we come here for the organ. We're not coming here for both. I tell I tell Dresden, I was like, I feel like there's there's something there's something else here. He couldn't have afforded this this part and his previous residence without having a substantial income. So let me let me roll with this, babe. Let me roll with this, and I pat him on the chest. And I turn to the I turn to the wife, and uh, can I roll a what is it a fast talking thing to see if I can get the information out of her? Hey, why don't you do a fast talk and then we'll see if it, if if it's good enough for a roll. Okay, okay. Uh, what's my fast talk at? It's like a million. Persuasion. It's sixteen. Yeah. Plus 16. Holy yes. shit. So, so yeah, uh, get, get, t- just say what you're going to say, and I'll say whether or not it's good enough for a roll. Okay. Because um, it's very, because fast talk is very much like a role play skill. So just saying I fast talk is not good enough. So okay, okay. Um, so mi- I assume Mrs. Henning, um, what's, can, what, what's your first name, doll? Uh, Lucy. Lucy. Can I call you Lucy? Yeah, I don't fucking care. Okay, now Lucy, I understand you may not have have the money now, but I I know that your husband was a very respectable man. He held a, a very high paying job. You guys lived in a very nice area. Now maybe there's a way that we can sidestep this entire process, and maybe there's a way I can get some money out of the old company. Could you do me a favor? Could you tell me a little bit about your husband's old job and what the company was? Okay, yeah, uh, fast talk check. Let's see, uh, I have 25 to pass this one. And I have a plus 16 to it. Yeah. So, what do I roll? Uh, 1d10 plus 16. 1d10 16. God. Boosh. Oh, wow, okay. Nice. Just made it. <laughs> <Yeah>, just... <laughs> um, Alright, so, she's sort of like... That, so she, for the first time, you can kind of see her like her mood lift um, when she says this. Is like, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, I don't know how much I can actually say because he's under NDA, but um, it, it, yeah, she used uh, Charles was a um, was it? A, let's see here. I got it written down. Uh, Okay. okay. As as she's talking, as you're saying this, I'm kind of like side eyeing Weldon, going like giving him the eye, like fucking start searching. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so um. Yeah. Uh, he used to do like cybersecurity for a a bank called uh, Alone. Uh, God. I had it written here, but I don't think I saved it. On it's worst okay. GM in history. <laughs> yeah. Um, worst GM in history. Uh, what a uh, fucking okay. asshole. Okay. Uh, Appleseed was the bank company that he used to uh, work for. He used to do cybersecurity. Head of the division over there. And we had a, a life policy over at... Um, what was the company that I said? Do you guys Appleseed. remember? No, no. The one before that for the life security. Oh. Uh, this is called. Uh, yeah, he was over at Sternum and Co. for the life support. A okay, life so, uh, policy. Yes. Okay, so I, I kind of walk over to her. I put my hand around her. I'm like calming her down, and just be like, and I'm just I'm just kind of like reassuring her. I'm like, you know, CRS has your best interest at heart, and I'm just like kind of still fast talking her while with my other hand I'm like pointing at Weldon, like go go go. All right, looking. Uh, Kristen, give me a, um, a, uh, perception check. A perception check? Alright, my perception is plus 12, so that's... So, one... it's like, uh, awareness slash notice is what I'm after. 
Where is this? Uh, oh, that's plus right, 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get over that. What was that, 1d10 plus 15? Yep. Okay. 22. Okay. Uh, on the table uh, of merchandise, you spy um, uh, the medication uh, prescribed to uh, uh, people who come out of CRF. So they can... Basically, people uh, from CRF uh, who get... Uh, organ placements or transplants from CRS, they can sign up for a medication deal. Uh-huh. And uh, if you look on the pink slip for um, Charles Henning, he does have prescribed medication there. It also happens to be the type of medication that uh, you like to indulge in. Preludes. Ah, the ludes, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I my I, as as I'm calming her down like this, I kind of look over the table and I meet my eyes go wide and I just go. And I look, I look, I catch eyes with Dresden after I look at the bottle of pills and I look at him and then I look at the bottle of pills and I'm like constantly just going like, fucking loots, man. So, so like, I man. get Dresden, like go get that bottle. So here's the thing, uh, you are now aware of the type of medication that normally goes out with people. <laughs> so it's a mixture of uh, pain and sleeping medication. Mm -hmm. And since it is the 80s, or the future 80s, Preludes is the... Preludes are the... Ludes, man! Ludes. <laughs> yeah, uh, Preludes are the uh, the medication of choice when helping people go to sleep. So, here you go. Oh, uh, for, for chat, Ludes are short-term analogy for Preludes, which is a sleeping pill. from Quaaludes. Yeah, yeah quaaludes. Um, so I, I kind of like I, I'm sitting there with my mo with yeah. my mono knife, just kind of like rubbing it on my brand new armored skin, just kind of like waiting to get okay, whether we're gonna cut this I'm, fucking I'm, guy I'm, out. I'm, I'm still like rubbing her shoulder, and I look at Dresden, and I kind of mouth to him, "Get the pill bottle." To All me. right, now uh, um, <laughs> I walk over to the, the the table. I like check. I like. Check the, the little bag of, uh, the, of you know, their, their drugs and shit, just kind of like just going out and then casually just kind of pocket the bottle, walk right. over to Weldon and hand it to him. Yeah, you know, very not just rid. Super like sleight of hand. Yeah, yeah just like. Yeah. Do we have a sleight of hand? I'm pretty sure that's a reflex skill. It doesn't matter because I fumble and drop it on the ground like a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> That it's okay. Would be, it would be pickpocket, right? Probably. <laughs> oh, wait. There is pickpocket? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. We'll okay. just roll with that, so. Do your best. This is an easy one, 15. Boom. 19. Okay, yeah, no, you easily get them. Nice. Uh, now, Weldon, why don't you give me another uh, a DC 25 check? God damn, that's a high roll. Yeah, well, he doesn't have hacking, so. Of course it's so uh, okay. Um, I figured he had all these tech skills. Same he, dice, right? He has he has like security, I have like electronics and shit like and that. Stuff, yeah, but he doesn't really uh, have hack. So. Yeah, same. Ooh, dice. killed it! Yeah, yeah. Boy. Oh, all right, shit. give me one more. I've been and practicing. Now you gotta go past twenty-five <laughs> on this as well. Oh, motherfucker, so are. Yeah. Uh, basically, Eric's <laughs> Eric's fast talking gave you oh, another. Fuck. Oh, come on. Oh, fucking goggins. So what you get out of it is that you are aware that there is an account under <laughs> Charles Henning's name, but there's no way in hell you are able to, like, fucking change it. We need a hacker. <laughs> okay. Um, well, look at me. Is there, is there a and way that I can... has breasts now, here. Is there a way that I can <laughs> yeah. call in something from the CRS to, to look this up? You can hire another person. But they don't have hackers on staff. They're a uh, organ. Uh, they're a medical facility, man. They don't have hackers. So. Okay, so can I like look in my phone for a name that I have and just be like, I need to hire. Certainly, this Dresden this, would know. This like, is more of a Dresden. Hackers would be. I mean, okay. Yeah. I <laughs> Where is hacking? Right. So I, but, I walk over to to Dresden after after talking to Weldon, and he's just like, I I got nothing, and he gives me. I guess what whatever the list is that like he he turns the computer to me and shows me what he got, and so I bring I, I kind of motion for I, I let I let the chick go and I just go one one second doll one second and I walk over and we're all kind of like huddled together in a group, and uh, I go. So Benji is basically still sitting on the bed just like 
fucking playing with a uh, with a scalpel, like putting the scalpel into a finger. She's like our fucking and... Harley Quinn. <laughs> yeah, it's just, like... just like playing with it like yeah. finger tricks. Yeah, she's, she's, she's just sitting there, just sort of waiting. She's like, like you guys are huddling up, and she's like, she's giving me an uh... odd erection. Uh... <laughs> All right, so uh, uh... I could stab someone right now. All right, so I, I, I look uh... at Dresden and I go. Dresden, do you know anybody that can get into this account for us? Dresden, you do know people. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got someone. Okay, I hand him. I hand him my cell phone. Dresden's like a scumbag. Yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> I hand, I toss him my cell phone. I go, make it happen, babe. We need to have this now. There is something here. Now? Well, if you want it right now, it won't cost you, son. Whatever. Whatever. I don't care. Free. You think, you think I give a shit about money? Bitch, I'm rich! Okay. Uh, so... Uh, He's you, fully prepared to drop 26,000. You have 26, a contact <laughs> by the name of uh, Sonia Randolph. Sonia. Who can help you. Um, she is... A bit of a uh, loner. Uh, not a loner. She, she's sort of like... She lives in a nomad pack, um, so she she basically the only thing that keeps her sort of situated is the fact that she has a number that sometimes changes and sometimes doesn't change. So, um, you why don't you give me a street street deal? Is that what it is? Street deal or street smart? Street deal. What should I do? Luck to see if I get the right number. <laughs> Luck is used for re-rolling or adding yeah. once to a thing. So. Uh, yeah, give me a street deal. Uh, it's going to be a 15 or higher. Basically, um, so basically what this represents is if you pass it, uh, so uh, 1d10 plus 6. If you pass it, um, you nope. your contact is Shit. up to date. Okay, your contact with her is not up to date, so unfortunately um, you're going to have to spend a bit of time. This, this chick changes her number all the fucking time, dude. I uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get her today, so what do you, what do you want to do? You want to just take the... Take the tubes, get out of here. I feel like you're chasing chasing a rabbit down a rabbit hole, man. This is a. Uh, what are you gonna do? Like switch over the life insurance to you? Like Preston, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> <laughs> I look, I look, I put my arms around both of them and I say, Jeez. "Give me just a sec, guys." I walk over, I walk over to, uh, I walk over to. Um, Lucy. Shit, what was her name? Lucy. I walk over to Lucy and I say, "Lucy." Today's your lucky day. We're going to be in contact with you, but uh, we're, we're going to go work over the numbers on our end. And let's let's have let's have another let's have another sit down talk uh, tomorrow. We'll be back. We'll be back tomorrow. I'll bring I'll bring some 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 lovely drinks for us and we'll sit down and we'll see how we can make this work. OK, how does that sound? She like looks severely disappointed. She's like. So what happens now then? And I'll look, I look at her and I go, we're going to make this work for you guys. For you guys, we'll all be in a better spot tomorrow. Let's re, let's reconvene tomorrow. And I start, I start kind of, I start, uh, kind of like pushing the guys out the door and I, I motion for BTE to like, get the fuck, come on. And I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll be in contact. I'll see you tomorrow. So wait, you, you just leaving? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I want to just get everybody out in the hall really quickly. Uh, she just looks fucking dumbstruck as you leave, and she's just like, <laughs> uh, okay, um, let me just, okay, no, you're fine, you leave. Okay, so I get everybody the in the hall, doing? I get everybody in the hall, and I go, listen, Dresden, on that account that Sheldon brought up, he works for a very major organization, do you know who the house company is? I don't fucking care. These guys are loaded. If he was a former employee, that means his life insurance policy is out the yang. It could be possibly double what he owes us. Preston, we to get, but, we, but that doesn't mean shit to go. us if he's dead. It means everything to us if, if he's dead. If we kill him taking those tubes out, then he doesn't owe us anything anymore. But that's not what his wife may think. I'm pretty sure they know how the fucking policy works. Does she, though? Does she look where we are right now? You pay off the organ or you don't. If you don't pay it off, you take it's taken back. Look where we are right now, Dresden. You tricked that girl outside with one Eurobuck. These 
people are ripe for the taking. Don't you see that? I thought you were a better businessman. So we're going to kill her husband, and then we're going to take the money she gets from her dead husband's account. Exactly. I like how you and leave her in squalor this. and filth. Exactly. When we can just take the fucking organ back and do our goddamn jobs. Our, that organ is not going to pay off the money he owes us. We need to be in the black on this, Dresden. Now, I don't see get your point. ass I just, outside. I I've got some good point. news to tell you. But right now, immediately get on this phone and find another hacker. We need into this account. Let's go. I smack the phone out of his hand. Do it yourself, fuckface. I pick up I pick up the phone. I go, come on, Sheldon. And we start walking outside. <laughs> I'm with Dresden on this one. BTE's like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up, man. We're repo okay. men. We're not Even fucking BTE. fiends. Yeah. <laughs> BTE. She has like no moral compass. And she's like, all right, this is kind of beyond. <laughs> okay. I walk, I walk outside and I'm, I'm fiddling with the phone and I go, oh, by the way, I don't know. What's it? What's like a good 80s swear word? What, uh, look what, up what are you looking for? Yeah. There's a, there's a glossary gonna, of like glossary. Uh, swear words you can use. Where, where, where is that? I really want to see that <laughs> It's yeah. about uh, 17 pages long yeah. in terms of hey, like sit swear on words. <laughs> God, where is this? There it is. Uh, here, I'm going to put this in chat too. Here is the slang words that God. you can use when you play Cyberpunk 2020. Call me a juve or a juvie if you want. Uh, um, did <laughs> dick nuts? <laughs> Douche nozzle. I call him dick, dick, nuts. dick Nuts. All right. Dick Nuts is pretty good. Whoa. Yeah. That's the line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't say that. <laughs> no, anyway, no you do. You do say <laughs> it. You know the car we all drove here in? That's yours now. You're welcome. Thanks. So it's, now... Uh, it's... Uh... The, the car that you had last episode. It was purchased from the chop shop. So now you guys have like a mobile base oh, model. Okay, right, I got you. So yeah, you I can. Mean, thanks, but I'm still not gonna fucking kill a dude and then disparage his wife for no reason. There's nothing to do with disparaging his wife. His wife is a drug dealer. Exactly. Let her fucking get a couple thousand dollars. She can pick herself up and maybe make something of herself. You know it's what? It's his I... fault she's this way. We come out. If we come out in the black of this and there's extra money, we'll give it to the wife. Otherwise, we're recouping our costs. Okay. All right. So I, I then, like, I, like, put my phone into his hand. I was like, make the call. And then I turn around and I start talking to BTE or something. I don't know. <laughs> He's like, it's, how's your penis doing? <laughs> so there's a little there's a little chafing here. Take a look. What do you think about this line? <laughs> oh yeah, it seems a little swell. Uh, she like breaks it and just stops. She's like, you sure it's misfires a dart in your eye. Jesus Christ, he's got a hair trigger. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no, oh, no, no. right now. So it's gonna take me a while to get there. I dropped my dick down the stairs and it started <laughs> shooting and it killed everyone. <laughs> It's like, it's like, the, like the crackhead girl on the, on the corner. That's real yeah. nice. Easy. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> true. Lies. Like I drop it down the stairs and it's just firing off and killing bad guys. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what I was referencing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, so who, who, who's this person I know? This other person I might know? Uh, Sonia. You met her a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, no. I thought I was trying. I thought I couldn't get a hold of her, so I have to call someone else. Oh, I mean, you can work your contacts for maybe like 12 hours or something like that, see if you can find her again. Okay. Nomads are notoriously hard to find. Yeah, that's their um, fucking shtick. That's the whole shtick. So, yeah, uh, I'll tell you what, if you give me uh, four successful um, street deals at 10 um, in a row, uh, yeah, we can rock it. So. Just press up another three times uh huh oh no all right so so that's enough one. uh so oh. you're gonna have to wait another day before you can do this